Well, it is that time of year again. Adobe has updated Photoshop. They've actually updated just about every program that they have. Um, so we have a new version. It's the software version is called 26 but the actual name of the program is called Photoshop 2025. So that's how you'll know that you have the latest version. Once you get it installed and you feel good about everything, you can go ahead and delete the old version. So that's fine as well. Um, I just did check for up the updates in the Adobe Creative Cloud Updater. It worked fine. It showed me all the updates. I have heard people have to restart the, the updater program or even restart their computer, but of course, all questions related to updating the software should always go to Adobe. I can only show you what's new inside of here. I can't help you get the software. Um, and then the last thing I'd say is, you know, leave a comment. Uh, let me know, you know, what you find interesting, what you want to learn a little bit more about. See me dive deeper into it. Uh, I don't leave YouTube comments on, but if you're part of my email community or you're over on the website watching this video, uh, just drop a comment in there and let me know. Let me know what you think and let me know what you uh, want to jump a little bit deeper into. Let's go ahead and dive in. Our first tool is going to be probably one of my favorite tools in the last couple of years, and it's just gotten better now. It's going to be that remove tool. So it's grouped in with the spot healing tool, the healing brush and all that stuff, the remove tool. If you ever lose your tools, and sometimes when Photoshop updates, people have had tools hidden, you can go to the three little dots at the bottom of your toolbar, click on that, and it's going to say edit toolbar. It's going to open up a window here and easy thing to do, restore defaults, make sure that you don't have any tools hidden over here on the right hand side, but restore defaults will take everything back to normal. So the remove tool has gotten better in a couple of ways. You're going to see more options up here at the top that didn't used to exist. So the main thing is going to be find distractions and then a mode. Okay. We didn't, we didn't used to have a mode inside of here. So the remove tool was always AI driven, but it wasn't necessarily, it wasn't necessarily giving, giving us the option to use the generative AI. Okay. So what we're able to do here is either choose auto. Uh, if you don't want generative AI on at all, it's using in a way similar technology. Again, it's still AI, probably a little bit closer to what content aware was using in the past, but you can turn generative AI off or turn it on if there's one reason that you like it or don't like it. I prefer the auto method up there. I also prefer to check uncheck remove after each stroke. I want to go in here and I want to brush on the strokes that I want and I want to tell it to remove when I want. I don't want it to automatically do it after each brush stroke. Okay, so we're gonna forget about find distractions for now. The remove tool, just like before, we use a brush, right, le right and left bracket key, make it bigger or smaller, and you can go brush over an area and then hit that little checkbox at the top and it will get rid of those things. And it did a good job and it's always done a good job on some of these smaller things. Here's where it's improved. Before this update, I would have to go in with the lasso tool or even use our new uh, selection brush. This isn't brand new. This is new in a recent version of Photoshop, recent update of Photoshop. But I have to go in and make a selection. So the lasso tool, the selection brush, whatever it is, they both make a selection. And I'd have to go in there, and then I have to go into generative AI. I would leave it blank and hit generate. But now, with the remove tool, the way it works is it's actually using generative AI. So it it essentially, it's, it saves a step. All right, so I'm able to go in here and brush with the remove tool, the same tool that I'm used to using, brush with the remove tool. It should close the loop for you once you go in there and brush on the areas that you want and then hit that little checkbox at the top. And now again, it's gonna use AI or not use AI. You leave it on auto. It's gonna use what it thinks is going to be the best version there. But these bright spots, these distractions, these are things that I, I almost would have never even tried to remove in the past. I don't even think content aware Phil was good at removing them in the past, but now it does a really good job. What's the difference of doing it the way that I just did or doing it with the selection and using generative AI? Generative AI would give you a few different uh, variations to sample from. So it would give you three different variations and you could of course generate more. The remove tools just giving you the one, but in my experience, it's actually doing a really good job. So just something to keep in the back pocket there. If it doesn't work, then maybe going the selection route and using actual generative generative AI would do the fix for you. But this is a this is a really welcomed um, a welcomed addition here because to me the remove tool is probably one of my favorite tools for uh, for most of my photos. Okay, next up when it comes to people, so. 
the remove tool, it, it'll it'll do a good job. I've got some a photo with some uh, some people in the background here. It's a slightly longer exposure, so you can see the people are blurry. So we'll go to the remove tool, click on find distractions, choose people, and it says editable on there because it's gonna in pink show you what it's gonna remove. And then when you're ready to go, uh, you can just go in here and hit that little checkbox. Or if you don't wanna remove what it thinks it should, you can go into subtract mode. Uh, keyboard shortcut for that would be the option key on Mac or the alt key on PC. Go into subtract mode and subtract whatever areas you don't want it to, but then just hit that little checkbox up there and it'll go in there and it'll remove uh, the people from your photos. Now, there are people way, way off in the distance. I just think they're so small that it's not necessarily registering them as people inside of there. So you'd have to go through uh, you know, any of your other remove tool, any other distraction removal tools to get rid of them, but the remove tool would work just fine for that as well. Just probably wouldn't use it on the auto mode. But here's where, it's, it's gotten better because again, this was one where I, I think of remove people, you know, people in the, in the background in the scene, kind of like this, like the tourist remover, right? But there still is, there's people in the background here. So the same thing applies. We go over here to find distractions, uh, click on people. It's going to outline in pink what you want. What I noticed is sometimes Sometimes it starts to, to eat in too far into some of your subjects. So you can use the brush because the remove tool is a brush. You can use the brush, again, put it in subtract mode. Just press option on Mac or alt on PC. Put it into subtract mode and I can brush out of those areas here so that it's not considering them as part of it. And you don't have to be perfect about it. You can let it overlap a little bit. In fact, a little bit of overlap actually works better in most cases. You can see it missed her hand, so I would actually go in there and maybe brush on that as well. So I think everything else looks uh, looks pretty good inside of there. Back out a little bit and then just hit this little checkbox at the top. So that's not necessarily tourist removal, it's just cleaning up, cleaning up a photo. Cleaning up a photo that, again, last year I used this example in generative fill. I made a selection and then I use Jenner to fill with no prompt to remove it. But this time now we're able to just do it with the remove tool, let it go ahead and find that area and make the selection for us. We don't have to do that work. So it's always good to know. I, I think it works good most of the time. I'm having a lot of luck for it, but at least now you know an easy way to do it. And again, you could always make a selection and use Jenner to fill to try to remove it if it doesn't work this way. Speaking of things not working has absolutely nothing to do with my segue into a very quick word from our sponsor, but um, if you're interested in Photoshop, which I think you are if you're watching this video, uh, I've got a Photoshop how-to course, okay? And this course is, is geared for people that are just past the beginner phase where you know you need to know how to use Photoshop, but once you know the basics, chances are you're just wondering how to do things, okay? And this course is full of all of the most popular how-tos inside of Photoshop, and I even go in from time to time and add new ones in there and update it based on um, any changes to the software. So you can always swing by the website, you can find the full list of how-tos and see if what you're looking to learn in there. I know for me and other hobbies I have, the more, the more I focus in on one person, to learn from, the easier things become. So it keeps me from scouring the internet and getting all these different sources of information. It really keeps me locked in onto a more cohesive way of learning. So I think that's one of the, the benefits of a how-to course uh, from just one person in there. So you can always swing by the website. Um, also, it will get updated. There's not too much to update. You'll see the features that I'm covering this video are more kind of changes to existing features in there. So just about everything in the course, I'd say 98% of the course would work exactly the same with uh, some of the changes that we have today, but I will go in there and update what needs to get updated in the next week or so, and that'll get uh, issued into a free update for the course again. So if you wanna learn all about it, just swing by the website, let's jump back in. Let's get back to the tutorial. We left off, we were talking about the remove tool and some of the new features in here. One of them is called wires and cables. So I've got some, uh, some electrical wires phone wires, whatever they are in the, the photo here. One of the things I suggest to do with, with the wires and cables option, create a blank layer to do the work on there. Then come up here, find distraction, wires and cables, and uh, it'll do a good job of finding those inside the photo and removing them. I'll zoom in in a second here. When it's done, we'll take a look at that center area there. And we can see that it did a nice job as I turn that off. Now we can see the wires turn it back on, did a nice job of getting rid of them. It doesn't get rid of the poles 
unfortunately, but you're already on the tool that you would use to do it. So that's why I like having remove after each stroke turned off because now I can just go, just give a quick swipe on some of these. That was probably a tree I just swiped on, but that's okay. Just give a quick swipe on some of these, uh, these poles over here and then hit that checkbox. So it'll go ahead and remove them. So again, you already, you already got that separate blank layer selected. You've already got all the options turned on. Just follow it up with the remove tool to, uh, to clean up anything that you wanted to. I couldn't resist. I had to, I downloaded a stock photo from Adobe and I just, I wanted to see what it would do on a photo with just a ridiculous amount of wires on. In fact, let's cancel because again, it'll show you the, a good reason why you would want to uh, create a, uh, a blank layer to do this on. And again, don't forget to turn on sample all layers. If, if you make a blank layer and you do work on the blank layer on any tool and you don't have sample all layers on, it won't work. So, but you could see it, it did, it did a, a pretty good job of getting rid of all the wires. I did mention that, you know, I make that extra layer in there because sometimes you might want to go in and mask things back in because sometimes it does get a little bit overzealous in what it's trying to uh, remove from there. Next thing's going to be uh, some features. These are features that have been there, but it's it's updated. So Firefly is is the model behind generative AI inside of Photoshop. So what they've done is they've updated that model that it's using for us. So remove background, which got our little contextual taskbar here. And if you've ever lost that, just go under the window menu to uh, contextual taskbar. Remove background has been there for a while. So we've been able to go in here and remove background. Generate background has been in here for a while. So we can go in here and generate background, but now it's using that new AI model or the newest, latest AI model that we have inside of here. So I think I put um, outdoor scene with mountain backdrop, but beautiful outdoor scene with mountain backdrop. So we'll hit generate and let's see what it puts my son, as he embarked off onto his prom several years ago, let's see what it puts into his background here. And um, it, it did a really good job before. It gave me some really interesting ones. So let's scroll through. I mean, not bad, right? Uh, so if you're ever trying to replace a background, it's a good way to do it. And now essentially what's happened is just the results are better. With that newer AI model, you're just getting better results with it. Uh, and, and I kept one that I did last year just to show. So this was last year's version. I'll just cycle through a couple. I just think I said daylight city scene through a window. And you can see the buildings are kind of warped and crooked. Did it do a good job on some of the window panes? It's, it's got a night view inside of there. So it, it's okay. And then I did the same thing with the newer version. So this is just three versions. I don't like that one. I think that one's pretty, pretty bad, but that one doesn't look too bad inside of there. So it, it's definitely, I'm noticing the results with your generative AI are just tend to be better and better uh, as we go along. Now, the last one is going to be if we have a, so there's more raw formats that are uh, working through your denoise feature inside of Adobe Camera Raw. So when you open up a raw photo in Adobe Camera Raw, you'll see your denoise feature inside of there. It's gotta be a raw photo. Well, one of the most notable ones in the new formats that are available is it does the Apple Pro Raw. So if you're uh, shooting in the raw format on your iPhone, um, Apple does a little bit of noise reduction in there for you and it's, it's not bad, but if you wanted to keep it and use it inside of Adobe Camera Raw, I definitely do think the Adobe model is going to be better. So if you're shooting in raw on your camera, which if you don't know how to do, make sure you Google it. There's, there's a couple settings that you do have to turn on to make it happen. Happen, uh, then you can come in here and use that denoise feature on those raw photos. As I mentioned earlier, feel free to uh, leave a comment on you know what features you find the most interesting, and um, you know more importantly, what what do you want to see me dive deeper to or deeper into in the future? Also, if you're looking to uh, learn a little bit more, I've got another video here that's free to watch, and this one's on a feature that came out last year: custom adjustment uh, presets inside of Photoshop. So that if you're looking to learn a little bit more about that and a feature you might have missed, that's a great place to go to next.